Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another episode of Asteroid Update. So we have had a very, very busy month. We've had a lot of things going on, but uh, we've had some really, really good news and we've had some not so good news. And I guess it's kind of traditional that we start with the not so good news so we can feel good at the end. So the not so good news is that the Asteroid Impact Mission, which we've been so excited about, a mission to go to an asteroid, a binary asteroid, observe it, study it, and then observe a human-made spacecraft hitting another asteroid, that is not getting the funding from the European Space Agency that it wants. And so at this point, the mission will probably not go forward as planned on the timeline planned. However, we believe in it and the team behind it still believes in it and it's still possible it has a future in some form or another. So stay tuned, stay hopeful, we never know, we might actually get to see this fly in some form. But of course, that's uh, what the competition has been about for the last three months. And so I guess it's as good a time as any to announce the winners of last week's, or last month's competition. So last month we asked you why you supported AIM and the two winners are at Astro Test, who said, I support AIM because countries don't fight each other when they work together for a common goal, the goal of a peaceful and safe future. The second winner was 27 Callum S, who said, I support AIM because it lays the groundwork for what I believe to be a big part in the future of humanity, or lack thereof, without AIM and AIDA. Of course, if you still support AIM, and you haven't visited the website isupportaim.com, you probably should because while the mission didn't get funded, it's still possible that it has a future and any support from the public will help it. Now, without uh, an AIM mission, we don't have any t-shirts to offer this month, but as a promotion or as a, an Asteroid Day themed reward, Brian May and uh, Greg have come up with a uh, an asteroid themed, Christmas themed picture frame and it's going to be available for your Facebook or your Twitter profile. It's going to basically be a bunch of snowflakes with a picture of an asteroid hidden in there for those that uh, think they can tell the difference between a bunch of stars and an asteroid. So uh, a little festive treat there for asteroid fans. So on to the good news and the good news is that Asteroid Day has officially been recognized by the United Nations General Assembly. So basically this means that International Asteroid Day is now an official thing. Previously it was just, just a bunch of uh, asteroid fans and astronomy nerds like me who would uh, get together on June 30th and educate the public, talk about asteroids and share what we know and in a hope to uh, you know, make the world more aware of what we consider to be an important issue. Earlier this year, the Romanian astronaut Doran Pranariu and the Association of Space Explorers submitted a proposal to the United Nations to recognize Asteroid Day. We propose that the UN General Assembly resolve that the International Asteroid Day be celebrated and promoted annually. They uh, applied to the General Assembly with a, a request that this be recognized as, as an official day and a uh, we got our wish, so June 30th is now officially recognized around the world as Asteroid Day. I'll take a decision on the draft resolution. The committee adopted the draft re resolution without a vote. May I take it that the Assembly wishes to do the same? It is so decided. And we look forward to Asteroid Day 2017, where no doubt lots of fun asteroid-related stuff will be happening. For those of you who still wonder why June 30th is Asteroid Day, June 30th is the day where the Tunguska Bolide came down and leveled thousands of square miles of Siberian forest. It's uh, probably the most destructive asteroid event in modern times. And so therefore it was felt that it was an appropriate day to uh, uh, make this happen. And now with those two big news items out of the way, it's time to get on to this month's special guest, Tom Jones. Now it's not unusual to be confused by that because there is actually an astronaut called Tom Jones. Not only that, this was an astronaut who also studied asteroids and well, we'll talk a little more about that. Three, two, one. 
and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Endeavour on a mission to study the Earth's ever-changing environment. Hello, today we have Tom Jones here, astronaut, space scientist and asteroid expert. Hello, how are you Tom? Uh, good to be with you Scott, I'm doing fine. It's a great morning here in uh, DC. Virginia That's actually. Great. So yeah, we're obviously talking about asteroids and you have a lot of experience in this. Could you maybe start out by telling the audience how you came to be such an expert on this? Well, I studied asteroids as my scientific discipline, uh, starting back in the 1980s as a graduate student at the University of Arizona. So my graduate work uh, for my PhD was to look at asteroids in the main asteroid belt and find out which of them had water locked up in the minerals on their surfaces. And so I did a telescope survey with a big telescope, uh, the NASA Infrared Telescope out in Hawaii. And we surveyed about 40 asteroids and it looked like we found a number of them uh, increasing as you went farther from the sun uh, with water uh, in the clay minerals locked up on their surfaces. And that's very promising uh, as to very promising uh, that we might find water on other asteroids that we could use as a resource out there in space. Uh, yeah, I uh, gather that you're also an advisor to Planetary Resources. Yeah, I'm a scientific advisor to that company, that asteroid mining company. So that's how I got my start is looking at water in the asteroid belt. And then as a, as a planetary scientist, uh, I took an interest in the effects that asteroid impact has had on our Earth, uh, as well as the other planets in the solar system. And so, you know, that's a, an actual geological process that goes on on Earth and the other planets. Uh, but it happens to be one that we're positioned well to deal with now in the space age. And so we can do something about this natural disaster. Right. We are the first species on the planet that could potentially change one of these events. And that's what Asteroid Day is all about. Right. We've um, been passive victims of this process here on Earth uh, since the human race began. And the planet's been subjected to cosmic bombardment for four and a half billion years. And this is the first century that we can actually do something about that process. So you have heard about the UN declaration that June 30th is now officially recognized as Asteroid Day. Do you feel this is a good step forwards? It is. It's not a technical step. It is a public education step. So the United Nations endorsing the idea of an international Asteroid Day is a recognition that this is a global hazard, uh, that it's of concern to all the peoples around the globe, and that your global uh, citizens, the public, should get involved in uh, helping us prevent this from ever happening on Earth again, an asteroid catastrophe. So this UN recognition gives a special status to Asteroid Day every June 30th and allows us, to, I think, to reach a, a broader and wider audience. Indeed, asteroids are peculiar in terms of natural disasters because awareness is the biggest hurdle to doing anything about them at this point. Well, that's right. You can't do anything unless you're aware. And the more people are aware of the asteroid hazard, and we can increase that number through the Asteroid Day celebration every June 30th, the more people that are aware of this, the more that they can communicate to their uh, policymakers, their governments, uh, that they should work together to prevent a future asteroid strike. And that involves not just studying asteroids with telescopes, but actually tr cataloging them, tracking them, predicting whether they will strike the Earth, and then working together to develop the technical means to divert an asteroid from a collision course with Earth. And that kind of effort is an international one. And the more pressure, the more enthusiasm we have for this effort, the, the faster it'll go. So after your research, you went on to become an astronaut and you flew on several missions. Yeah, I was on four missions on the shuttle. That's right. Up to the space right. station on my last one. I'm actually wondering, I've seen a lot of astronauts that have signed on to the 100X declaration. And I'd really like to get your opinion. Do you think that being an astronaut makes you more aware of these problems and the steps we can take to deal with them? Well, you see the Earth as a planet from space. That's one of the great privileges of going there. And when you look down at the Earth, you can't help but study beforehand and then observe in person the geology, uh, the history of our planet as portrayed in its geology and its surface. And you fly around the world and an astronaut can easily see uh, dozens of impact scars on the surface of the Earth. Uh, and with a little bit of study, you can really uh, uh, know what to look for and even find small ones like Meteor Crater, which is you know only a mile across in Arizona. You can spot that from space if you know where to look. The bigger ones are, are very dramatic, like Manicouagan up in uh, the, the northern provinces of uh, Canada. 
Um, you see in the Sahara Desert some traces of big impact craters. And then there's Vredefort in South Africa, which is 180 kilometers across. And you can see the actual rings of that multi-ring basin from a two billion year old asteroid strike. So you know that the Earth below you has gone through the same process as the moon up there that you can see, plastered by thousands of impact craters that are visible to us here on the, on the ground with a telescope. So we've both gone through the mill together and we know that that process is still ongoing. An astronaut can look down from a window and see meteors burning up in the atmosphere below him or her. And so that tells you that this process is still going on. And if we're unlucky in the next millennium, you know, we're going to be struck by a large asteroid that could do in a city or a region or even have global consequences. So uh, I think as an astronaut, you come back to Earth with an appreciation of Earth's place in the solar system uh, and that we're orbiting through this cosmic shooting gallery. Um, and yet, you know, you're part of an effort that has used a machine to put you into space to do work up there. And those same machines can be uh, applied to the prevention of an asteroid impact. So it, it gives me a positive feeling that even though I can see the dramatic violent past of the Earth, that we can do something to prevent that process from uh, threatening our species here. Right. So you think there's an implicit perception that by solving the problem of getting into space, You've now kind of looked at the next problem to solve, and this is one which has come within our grasp. That's right. And about 10 years ago, uh, our Association of Space Explorers, which is the Global Society of Astronauts and Cosmonauts, we actually took this on as one of our tasks. Our, one of our missions of, for, for the Association of Space Explorers is to protect the Earth's environment. Uh, and so protecting it from an asteroid strike would fall under that mission. And so we agreed in, in 2005 to conduct a study of how the planet might respond to the asteroid threat. And we turned that report over to the UN in 2008. And, you know, we're very proud to say that the Association of Space Explorers planted the seeds in this report for some of the steps that have been taken in the interim uh, to protect the Earth from an asteroid catastrophe. So this action by the UN this past week to adopt International Asteroid Day is a recognition that this is a global activity a cooperative activity and the astronauts and cosmonauts from around the world have a unique international uh, fellowship and we can apply that to talk to our respective governments and move this effort forward. Yeah, I think it's appropriate at this time to come up with a quote that I found from John Glenn who just passed away yesterday. He said, to sit back and let fate play its hand out and never influence it is not the way that man was meant to operate. And I think that this really captures what Asteroid Day movement is all about. That is true. Yeah, Glenn was a guy who stood up and volunteered to ride a very volatile, uh, not failure-proof rocket to put Americans into orbit and to get us jump-started on the way to the moon back in 1962. And, uh, you know, he applied that philosophy to his own uh, stance that he took to say, yes, I'm going to put my life on the line for... Uh, the space race and America's attempt to regain leadership in that field. And that philosophy stands us in good stead today. You know, you don't just sit back and let the earth absorb these impact hits in the future. You marshal the talents and skills that we have around the world and the collective will of, of the spacefaring countries and our partners. And we do something about this asteroid threat. And we've, we know we've gotten a number of reminders from mother nature that this is an ongoing hazard with Tunguska a hundred years, uh, well, 1908, 108 years ago. Um, and with the Ch uh, Chelyabinsk impact in uh, 2013. And so you put these pieces of the puzzle together and you see that we, we can act to prevent a future asteroid strike. So thanks, Tom. This has been a real pleasure. It's been really informative, and I'm sure everyone enjoyed what you had to say. Thank you very much. Thanks, and, and the ASC is going to continue to uh, support and push forward these conversations at the UN and among the spacefaring countries, the space agencies, so that we can look at the 21st century as the last time that a big asteroid surprised us from space. I think people should uh, uh, stand up and, and not let fate take control of their lives. They should be proactive like John Glenn was, and they should go to the asteroidday.org web website, check out uh, what they can learn about the asteroid hazard, and they should check out our website at the Association of Space Explorers. Click on the Near Earth Objects Committee, and they can learn more about what we've been doing and what you can do to uh, prevent a future asteroid strike. Thanks. So there you have it, Tom Jones, asteroid expert and astronaut. You know, they uh, view the world in a different way, I imagine. And uh, we, of course, have to view the end of the episode. 
We'll be around next month with more news. And in the meantime, of course, check out the Asteroid Day webpage. We will have the Christmas rocks uh, frame. That's apparently what we're calling it. Uh, so, yeah, see you around. Have a great holiday season. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.